All right, let's take a look at some of your thoughts on our big story yesterday here on the story. Our Blair Best had a rare ride along with the crew from Portland Fire Station 1 downtown to see how overdose calls have become all too routine. She spent four hours with them earlier this month, and in, in that time, they responded to one assault call and zero fires. The rest of the calls they responded to were all for overdoses. In fact, Fire Station 1 crews averaged 10 overdose calls every single day last month. And Blair showed us how there does not appear to be an end in sight to these types of calls. The majority of your comments blamed Measure 110 for legalizing user amounts of hard drugs in the first place. I feel for the firefighters because they're helpless. However, Measure 110 needs to be repealed. And after that, they need to outlaw public use and something more with fentanyl needs to happen. Jeff wrote to us saying, I do not feel any empathy for idiots who know the dangers of fentanyl and still keep using the drug. Measure 110 is ruining our state and cities. The firefighters should just stop responding to fentanyl overdoses. Well, David chimed in as well, writing Portland has made it way too easy for the drug addicts that live on the street to stay there and do their drugs. Time for some honesty about what's happening and where and why these people are here lacks drug laws. Bring back sense. Give these people a bottom to reach other than their own death. How about this one from Robert? This story made me seethe with anger more than any other story you've ever done. To see 10 or so EMT fire department personnel standing around yet another fentanyl overdose victim is beyond maddening. It's no mystery why 911 takes so long to answer. I hope to God I never need emergency medical attention in Portland. You know, every overdose call in Blair's story ended with the overdose victim refusing to be taken to the hospital because in each case they had already been given Narcan before fire crews arrived. That prompted questions like this one from another viewer named Robert saying, why are emergency services going to people who don't want help? If they don't want help, why are they calling them to come? And who pays for those services? I have to pay for emergency services when I use them. So who is paying the bill for these services? Now, the short answer to that question is one I think you already know the answer to. The taxpayers are footing the bill. So let's end with this message from Jane, who I think echoes the way many of you are feeling. She wrote, if Narcan is not available, people will die from overdoses. If Narcan is available, people will continue to use drugs and there will be no consequences for their behavior. As a society, do we just accept that there will be drug addicts on the streets committing crimes to support their habits and there's no recourse? This is just the way it is. I don't know where we as a community go from here. Yeah, wow. Well, if you missed Blair's story yesterday, you can watch it right now on the KGW YouTube channel. Just scroll down to the story section to find it. And if you ever miss a show and want to catch up, this is a really great place to start. You can watch the full episodes or just individual segments. The page is updated every weekday.